another episode of Business Every Day. Today we're going to be talking about bits, settings, the things that I use, and how I actually cut my stock material on my X-Carve CNC machine. There are so many bits, style of bits, types of bits, material of bits that you can use in this CNC machine. You can use half inch bits, you can use quarter inch, eighth inch, sixteenth inch bits. Uh, there's just the range of what you can use is extreme and honestly rather daunting. Um, what I have here are some of my bits that I use personally. Uh, most of them are end mill bits. Um, they're flat end mill bits instead of the curved or round nose um, because most of what I do is cutting material. I'm plunging my bit into this stock material and then it's moving along and removing that stock material for my designs. Now, if I'm doing engraving, what I actually use are these things. These are the um, V-bits. Um, I have a couple over here as well. The V-bits are the things that I use for engraving, for doing letters, and also for some detail work. There's a couple of ways in which you can use your CNC to get the end result that you're looking for. You can use single pass, multi-pass, uh, you can use tripod. I mean, you can go over your material as many times as you would like. Uh, but what I typically do with the projects that I've done so far is single pass or dual pass uh, cutting. With single pass cutting, I'm just programming an easel what I plan on creating. And then I tell the system that I will be using this particular type of end mill, either a custom bit or something that easel already knows. I set my feed rate, my plunge rate, and then I go for it. Now on multi-pass, sometimes um, you can do it where you have your main bit and then your detail bit, or you can just duplicate your project and then set it to zero again and then swap out your bit. And then if you're careful, it works just the same. Uh, I have done that a couple of times when I need to cut something out, but then I also want to put letters on it. Uh, so what I typically do is use the recommended settings on easel as a starting place. Now I'm going to throw up a chart here to show you some of the other options that you can have. But what I have found for myself is that it's trial and error. Uh, start off slow and then actually while the machine is running, you can hit the plus sign and it will increase its uh, feed rate plunge rate. One of the other things to consider is how you want your bit to enter the stock material. There is the standard plunge, which is 90 degrees straight up and down. They also have a five degree plunge and a 20 degree plunge so that you can decide how you want your bit to enter the material. What I have found personally with softer materials, having a 90 degrees just direct plunge uh, is perfectly fine. For uh, harder materials, and then when you start moving into the exotic materials like carbon fiber or acrylics or vinyl or um, even aluminum, is that I actually use an angle and that is what I have found to work for me personally. And I have also tried it the other way, but I was doing something that was, it was a 16th inch bit. And because I went straight down and then straight across, it actually just snapped the bit. Whereas if I kind of eased into it, it actually worked a little bit better. But I know for the smaller bits, it's not always the best decision. Anyway, you're going to have to experiment with that. One of the questions that I had to deal with, and I know a few other people have asked me, is what do I set my spindle to? Uh, you can set it from 1 all the way up to 6 if it is the Makita router. I do not know what the DeWalt router is on the machine. Um, but this will do something anywhere between, I think, like 10,000 to 30,000 or 40,000 RPM. It's fast. So if you have a dust collection system... Um, you can go faster because it will remove, it will be sucking away that material. But something to consider is faster is not always better. Uh, if you're cutting acrylic, you do not want to go fast at all. You want to set this as low as it will go, which is a one, uh, because you will begin by friction to melt the material. I have also found that when I was going through some hardwoods like oak or uh, walnut, that faster speeds can leave burn marks. And so I for all the cuts that I've done is done, I have never used anything higher than a three, um, somewhere between one and a three. Now my feed rate and plunge rate. Typically my feed rate is gonna be somewhere around 80. 
if I'm using a wood or some sort of wood composite material. Uh, it's gonna definitely going to be slower if I'm using something harder like aluminum or acrylic, then I might be in the 10 to 15. Uh, but that also depends on the type of bit that I'm using. If I'm just hogging out material, then I can go a little faster than if I'm trying to get like really detailed letters. Spindle speed also matters uh, if you are using a larger bit. So this is a larger bit so that I can actually surface or plane at the top of my material before I start carving into it so that it's nice and flat. Um, I want this spinning super, super fast because it is such a large surface area that it takes a lot longer for this thing to rotate than it does a 1 16th or a 1 32nd inch bit. And so keep that in mind that if you are going to be hogging out a ton of material with a heck of a large bit, you're gonna to wanna to spin it super, super fast. Um, I did one time use it at like a four or a five setting on the Makita, and that worked out great uh, because I was just resurfacing that piece of stock material. These are my standard burr flat end mill bits. These are the standard bits that you would get from X-Carve. This is a standard end mill bit, 1 16th inch. This is an eighth, an eighth. Here's a regular just cutting flute and then your v-bit these are special order bits right here this is a single flute uh, end mill bit that i actually got for my vinyl records and here is a 45 degree carbide v-bit it's very very small but this is what i was using to uh, engrave dog tags let me just tell you you are going to make mistakes um this was me having a feed rate that was just way too fast and aggressive and I snapped a bit same thing with this one this was a 132nd bit and this is a 116th bit that I just had feed rates that are way too fast and I ended up snapping them so you're gonna snap bits that's okay just get yourself up and try again so if you're really not sure what your settings should be start with the automatic recommended settings by easel and then work around that. Uh, I found that they are very conservative for the most part. Sometimes their feed rates scare me a little bit because they're like, just go like this, boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, no, that's way too fast. I had one uh, piece of MDF and it was cutting at, I think, 120 or 130 uh, inches per minute. And that was way too fast for my comfort level. So rule of thumb is start off with what you're comfortable with. Start off slow and easy and fine-tune your adjustments. You can hear in your machine what works and what doesn't work. You can hear the shimmy. You can hear when things are stressing and not cutting. You can look at the flex on your bit. Um, pay attention to what it sounds like, to what it feels like. Touch the table. If you feel the vibration, it's either not spinning fast, it's moving too fast, or the bit's moving too slow. The last piece of advice I would recommend is ask lots of questions. Go to the forums on Facebook, go to the forums on Instagram, look up a bunch of YouTube videos, put in the comments, what is your question, and look up what has worked for other people. There's lots of charts out there that say, do this and it will be fine. I have still broken bits using a chart. So your machine is, is, is a personality, and so learn from using it, and then begin to c collect your own data. And I have started my own chart of saying, this is what works in my shop with this stock material from where I acquire it with these bits and so on and so forth. So start experimenting, ask lots of questions, and you're going to find what actually works for you. Thank you so much for joining into today's episode. I hope you guys keep carving, stay safe, and join me next time.